exercise 17. In this exercise, we look at some of the new the functionality with sheet metal inside Creo 2.0. Uh, many of these things you could do in the other earlier versions as well. Uh, it's just they've uh, enhanced the interface a little bit, make it a little bit easier to use. Okay, so let's begin. Go to File New. Make sure Part is selected, Sheet Metal, and call this E17. Begin by starting a sketch. Click on Sketch and sketch on your right plane. Let's sketch here. Take the Line tool and draw a horizontal line, just about an inch, what looks like an inch on the screen here to the left until you connect to the origin. Drag a line up. Make sure you don't make equal lengths there. And then a little line at an angle, just like that. Middle click a couple times to finish it off. Go ahead and double click on these dimensions. This bottom one's going to be five. The vertical dimension is going to be four. The angle dimension is going to be 115. And then this dimension needs to be changed. We've got to go to normal, click on this line, and then middle click over here and just make that four. There we go. You can just hit OK. And let's proceed to extrude it. Uh, it might try and extrude it as a surface. So over here, instead of surface, make sure it thickens it as a wall. And then also the wall thickness needs to be 0.062 for the sheet metal. And the length here, let me just verify it on my manual, needs to be 5 inches. Okay. Um, also, if you go to um, options here, you can see that we've added the 5 inches blind, but uh, we also want to add bends to it. And so we're going to put in 0.09 on the inside and hit apply. Oh, also, there's bend allowances just as an FYI. Uh, this is very important, obviously. For, uh, you can set the K factor or Y factor. I'll go with the K factor. 0.32 and hit the green check mark to apply. Okay, now we're going to add a flange. Click on the flange tool. Select this upper edge right here. See where my pointer is on the screen? Click on that edge. And now rather than using these tools up here, you can. Um, instead, it's almost easier to just grab these little dots, like this little dot in the center. You can rotate this to 270 degrees. And then also change this to one inch height. And unfortunately, I went a little too far, so I'm going to right click on that flange over here and edit the definition. Not quite done with it yet. I hit enter too early. See those little dots here? Go ahead and grab that, drag it in. We want to offset it a little bit. Once you start offsetting it, you'll see the dimension minus one point, whatever. Just double click on that. Make sure you just change it minus 1.5 and offset from that edge and then drag this one in and do the same minus 1.5 okay and that um, not all that we want to look at also want to look at relief now when you click on relief you'll see this is set to a rip relief there's no gap in there that might be acceptable for some things like for uh, food products or uh, like stainless steel countertops that we're going to be used in food service industry or medical. Um, but in some other industries, you might want to actually put like a rectangular relief in there. Notice when I click on rectangular, it puts a cut in there. Okay. Um, and you could specify some parameters for that cut. I'm going to go with a brown. Watch how it changes. It puts it a little bevel. Now here it disappears. That's not a good thing, but it's easy to fix. All you have to do is instead of up to bend, just set it to blind and then 2.0 the thickness and there you can see the abround in there. An abround is typically used for die cutting. I've heard sometimes not either but uh, anyway we'll go ahead and hit the apply button here. And there we go. Next thing let's go ahead and sketch and select this top surface of the angled flange. Let's put some holes in there. Go to the circle tool. Draw a little circle there, and one over here, invert to it, 
and make sure you get the equal radius, the R and the R. Click, middle click two times. Let's put our own parameters in here. Dimension center point to this edge needs to be one inch. The center point of the second circle will baseline dimension off that top edge at four. Double click on this diameter dimension, that should be 0.75. And one last dimension from the center point to this front edge will be 0.75 as well. You could go ahead OK and extrude. Make sure you flip the, the little arrow up here so it cuts down into the part. And hit the apply. Make sure it just goes through. OK, at this point we want to put like a big circle in here, but we're going to flatten it out first. So let's go to the Unbend tool. Now it wants to flatten everything by default. That's because this little button up here with the Shazam lightning bolt turned on automatically. It selects everything. Let's go to Manual. Okay, and then um, you'll see here the references. Let's right click on there, Remove All. Now from here what we can do, we have this, uh, first of all, Fixed Geometry, we can select this face here. That was pre-selected for us to some extent. And then click in this box for bend geometry. And just select this bend. That's all we want to flatten. We don't have to flatten them all here. This is just so we can put that one circle in. Now at this point, let's go back to sketch. Select this face to start your sketch. Middle click. And now draw a big circle right in the middle there. We'll click a couple times. Uh, we'll set this to zero. If it is offset, my ears might actually be locked into that center line, which is good. Um, and then this needs to be 2.5 diameter. Let's take a look. Our book is going to be three. So it's really close there. And that's good. Let's now go to OK and extrude it, flip the arrow so it cuts down into the part, hit the green check, apply. Now we want to bend it back with that big feature there. Just go to bend back. It takes all the bends by default, but if you wanted to do it manually, you could do that too. Uh, that's very useful uh, where you could do folding stages and save them uh, as different stages of the model, put them in a the family table. And then you could show how something is bent, like for a progressive die or something. But let's go ahead and hit the apply button here. Okay, and there is our sheet metal part. If you wanted to completely flatten it, click on flat pattern. You can see the flat pattern. There's the bend information, the angles. That would come over to your drawing. And we'll uh, bend that back, or we can suppress that feature. And that concludes exercise 17.